A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. After this, Jesus went down to Capernaum with his mother and his brethren and his disciples. And there they stayed for a few days. The Passover of the Jews was at hand and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons and the money changers at their business. And making a whip of cords, he drove them all with the sheep and oxen out of the temple. He poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold pigeons, take these things away. You shall not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign do you have to show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? But he spoke of the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had spoken. We're going to talk about evil because there's a lot more of it that we can observe maybe than we have in the past. I don't know if, it was, if there's more of it there or if we're just seeing more of it. And there are two kinds of evil, and I think it's going to be an important distinction to make. One type of evil is just bad stuff that happens. So I want something, and I don't get it, whatever that might be, good thing, bad thing, maybe even the best thing, maybe something that I want with all my heart, and that you know being taken away from me or me not getting it, or me being afraid of something, some harm, and then that harm coming. That's one type of evil, bad stuff happening. The other type of evil is sin. It's not bad stuff happening to me, it's me doing the bad stuff. And we use the word evil to describe both, but they're actually very different things. So when I'm asked, and I'm, I think probably all of us have conversations like this fairly often, when I'm asked something like, Father Andy, why, gosh, this thing, I really need this thing, I really want this thing, it's really important to me. Why isn't God letting, you know, bringing this to my life? Why isn't God giving me this thing? Or why did God allow this really bad thing to happen in my life? It's a conversation I have all the time. I'm going to tell you right now, my answer to that is always going to be, I don't know. I, I preach the gospel, and I can preach about the salvation of the human race, but I'm not going to tell you why God does things as if I can read his inner thoughts. It's not really my business. So my answer, if you ask me all the time, and I'm always going to tell you, I don't know. You can give me all the details in the world, and I'll listen patiently for about a minute, and then I'll interrupt you, and I'll say, I don't know. I don't know why bad things happen. And when we get frustrated, and I hear this all the time, and somebody you know, will kind of respond to me saying, I don't know, and they'll say, but Father Andy, this is all that I've ever wanted. I still don't know why God does things, but I do know that might be the problem. That's all you've ever wanted is, I don't know, a job or a particular career to get into a certain school, to have, I don't know, a certain amount of money, to have a certain person notice you, to have, I don't know, whatever it is. And these are all good things, beautiful things. And so it's not that they're bad, but if that's all you've ever wanted, there might be something else going on. And it's not just about why do bad things happen. It's not really about bad things anymore. What we're talking about then is idolatry. Idolatry means you've, make, you've made something else your God. And when you tell me this is all I've ever wanted in my life, yeah, that thing's your God now. And what do we do with idolatry? Now let's get to the gospel. Jesus goes into the temple and there's animals being sold. Why do animals need to be sold? Well, there's 
animal sacrifices happening in the temple. But why is there animal sacrifice happening in the temple? Guys, it is not the original will of God for some person to like something to happen and then they have to go kill some innocent animal. That's not what God wants. Even St. Paul like makes fun of that in his letters. Why were there animal sacrifices? Pay attention in the Bible. You know when the animal sacrifices began in, in full? They began after the Israelites worshipped the golden calf. After, when, when Moses went up to the mountain to get the Ten Commandments, and he came down and he saw them worshipping the golden calf, they had made that calf out of gold. What, the golden calf is not just an animal. It's money, it's gold, and it's an animal. After that, God, only after that, God commanded the animal sacrifices. Not because God drinks the blood of animals, like some pagan god. The, the, the purpose is, oh, you worship this thing? No, 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 no. You, don't, you think this thing is a god? No, no, no. Destroy it. That's how far it is from being a god. Now, it's still kind of mean to animals. And I'm glad we don't do it anymore. It's fairly gross. However, the idea is very interesting. That when we replace God with something, that thing sometimes has to go. And sometimes we have our hearts, in, our, in the middle of our hearts, on the altar of our hearts, we put something else instead of God. Idolatry is an insult, not just to God, but to ourselves. It hurts us when we worship something other than God. We degrade ourselves when we replace God in our hearts with some other being. Now what's happened here? We've transitioned from the evil of not getting something we want. Now we're actually talking about sin. And that's actually the worst thing. Sin is a thing that God hates. Sin is the only thing that God hates. Now why is that? Because sin doesn't just ruin somebody's day. It doesn't just even ruin somebody's life. Sin ruins somebody's eternity. It ruins their soul. And that's why when he goes to the temple, this is the temple of God. This is the house of my father. And you're turning the house of my father into a place to make money. You have replaced God with gold. Yeah, Jesus is going to get mad at that. Because we're not talking about evil in the sense of, I wanted something and I didn't get it. Now we're talking about idolatry. You are the house of God. And in a few minutes, Jesus is going to enter your heart. And in your heart, which is supposed to be the temple of God, he might find something that's not God. And maybe he needs to make a mess for you to let go of the thing that you're holding on to that's not God. And if he does that, guys, remember, there's nothing that Jesus ever did that wasn't out of love. And if Jesus wrecks a few, few, few things and makes a little bit of a mess inside of you, in order to make room for himself, that's only because he loves you. And the reason why is, anything else you replace him with is only going to make you miserable. Clear the altar of your heart. Make room for Christ. And when Christ is the, is the only thing in, in the center of your heart on the altar, then you'll see really what real happiness is. And all the evils in the world are not going to make any difference at all.